from Thingamavlogs here to talk about some very important ladies within the Disney Legends family. A lot of us know some very popular women within the Disney Legends like artist Mary Blair, Jodi Benson, Julie Andrews, even Betty White is a Disney legend, but there are some amazingly talented, incredible women who have more than deserved their right to be called a Disney legend that you probably haven't even heard of. So give this video a thumbs up for all the awesome ladies out there and let's get started talking about some awesome Disney girl power. First up, let's talk about Dorothea Redmond, who was hired in 1966 to help develop parts of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. In Disneyland, she designed a lot of the shops and restaurants in New Orleans Square, as well as the Disney Dream Suite above Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, the Disney Dream Suite that everybody literally dreams of sleeping in. For Walt Disney World, she designed Fantasyland and parts of Main Street and mosaics within Cinderella Castle. So when you visit these places in these parks, remember to thank Dorothea Redman for making them as beautiful and submersive as they are. Marge Champion is a dancer whose face you may not recognize, but you surely know her moves. She was the live action model for Disney's first full length animated feature, Snow White. So when you see Snow White dancing around with the dwarves, that's actually Marge Champion. As a live action model, she would dance in front of the animator so they could accurately draw how Snow White's body and clothing would move as she danced. She later was a live action model for the Blue Fairy and Pinocchio, the Hippo in Fantasia, and Mr. Stork and Dumbo. I'm going to chalk that up to having some awesome dancer legs. Lucille Martin is definitely an unsung hero of Disney. You won't find any IMDb credits for her, but she undoubtedly impacted the Walt Disney Company for decades. Shortly after seeing Mary Poppins in 1964, she typed up her resume, walked to the studios, just showed up, and they hired her on the spot. And in only a few months after being with the company, she became Walt Disney's personal assistant. That's right, she was Walt's right-hand lady up until his passing in 1966. Then she became a personal assistant to Ron Miller and stayed with him until he became president of the company and eventually CEO. Then when Ron retired, she became the personal assistant of the next CEO, Michael Eisner. She herself was promoted to vice president to the Walt Disney Board of Directors until she retired in 2006. She may have been behind the scenes, but being the personal assistant to three CEOs of the Walt Disney Company is a huge deal. Ruthie Thompson has a very interesting story and it began even before her time at Disney. In the 1920s when she was a girl, she lived really close to the studio and she walked by so many times they invited her in and she would sit there on a bench and watch Roy Disney photograph animated cells onto film. She was hired to do ink and paint when she was only 18 years old. Her first job was putting the final touches on the cells of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Talk about a lot of pressure. After that, she was promoted to final checker to make sure the cells were perfect before being photographed on film. And then in 1948, she became promoted to supervisor of scene planning. How crazy that she became a female supervisor in the 1940s. That was not an easy feat for a woman back then. She also helped establish the camera mechanics used to photograph animated scenes and background art onto film. Since Snow White, she worked on almost every single Disney animated film up until The Rescuers. She retired in 1975, but with her time at Disney, she definitely paved the way for females in animation and camera mechanics. Harriet Burns is a super special lady because not only is she the first female Disney Imagineer, but she was also the first woman to ever have her own window in Main Street. She started working for Disney in 1955 as a prop and set painter for the Mickey Mouse Club. She got the attention of Walt and was brought into Imagineering when it was called Wedge Enterprises and was one of the first three people to make up the Imagineering team. She was literally a third of the beginning of Imagineering. And get this, her very first job making the Sleeping Beauty castle model for Disneyland. Straight out of the gate and Walt's like, hey, you're really talented, so create this castle that's gonna be the icon of my park and live in people's imaginations and dreams forever. No big deal. She also designed all of the singing birds in the Enchanted Tiki Room, built the miniatures on Storybook Land, modeled the Matterhorn bobsleds, built the exact models of Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion. There was literally no stopping her. There was nothing that she couldn't do. Fun fact, Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion was almost Madame Harriet. But after they made the model, they determined that Harriet's features were too small, so they used Leota Tombs for their model, who was also another Disney legend. Disneyland literally would not look how it looks today if it wasn't for Harriet Burns. And she absolutely deserves to be the first woman with a window on Main Street that you can still see over the Emporium today. When it comes to Disney costuming, you cannot forget Alice Davis. She studied art and started her career in fashion by designing undergarments and lingerie in Beverly Hills. But one day she got a call from a former art teacher who is now working at Disney saying he needed some costumes to be made to use as live action reference for a new animated film they were working on. 
The call was from another Disney legend, Mark Davis, and the film was Sleeping Beauty. She made the costume for Briar Rose, which led to costuming for the live action Disney film, Toby Tyler, which then got Walt's attention and he brought her in to do costuming for Disneyland. She worked directly with Mary Blair to create the costumes for It's a Small World and developed all the costumes for Pirates of the Caribbean. That's like over 200 costumes. And some of them are for like little animatronics that are this tiny for a small world. Perhaps even more importantly, she developed costuming procedures, set up a manufacturing base, and developed quality control refurbishing techniques that are still being used today in Disneyland. She and Mark Davis were married and worked side by side together at Disney for many years. And both of them have windows on Main Street right beside of each other between the Main Street Cinema and the Disney Honest Store. Super cute. I have so much love and respect for all of these amazing women. And even for the Walt Disney Company, because really they're the ones that provided this environment for these women to really excel in their profession and their talents, and they didn't inhibit them. They were like, hey, you're really talented. We want you to do these really great, important things. So to all you ladies watching this, I really hope that these women and their stories inspire you to go after your dreams. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.